The Very Old Man with Enormous Wings by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. So we have an old man, but he's very old, and he has enormous wings. He was found washed up on a beach by this guy, Palelo. Palelo was there, throwing crabs into the ocean, trying to help his sick child. How would this help his child? So Palelo decides to take this old man and lock him in a chicken coop. He does this because he believes the old man is an angel who had come to take his child. Afterwards, Palelo went and told all his neighbors about this thing. They also thought he was an angel because, you know, he's got wings. And guess what? These neighbors are kind of dicks. So they go over and decide to check out the chicken coop. Because they're dicks, they decide to throw stuff until the angel does something. Later, we see a priest, Father Gonzaga, arrive at their home to find if this birdman is really an angel or not. After attempting to talk to the angel, Father Gonzaga decides that this isn't an angel because it doesn't know Latin and instead spoke some unintelligible language. Also, Palelo and his wife decide to charge people money to go see the angel from here on out. So, just remember that they are making serious bank off of this. All the neighbors think he's an angel, and so they decide to bring people to him to try and get him to do miracles and, well, other angel stuff. For example, we have this blind guy who comes and wants to be cured of his blindness. Instead, he gets a brand new set of teeth. Kind of weird, right? Too bad he can't see his new teeth. Then a spider lady arrives in town, and she is truly hideous. Her body is a spider, and she has the head of a maiden. The townspeople begin to lose interest in the angel and start following the spider lady. This is because the angel won't do anything interesting for them, and the spider is willing to tell all of her stories. People stop coming to the angel, and for the most part, he is left alone. Anyways, Palelo has been getting really rich off of all the visitors. So rich, in fact, that with his money, he decides to upgrade his house and retire. Everything was going great for him. Meanwhile, his kid grew up a bit. I know. Shocking. Despite being quite cold to everyone else, the angel tolerates the kid. And they end up spending quite some time together. They even end up getting chicken pox at the same time. Then, the cell breaks down due to negligence. And the angel stays in the home of the family. However, the family doesn't really like them living there, and so he is always getting kicked out and finding a way back in. Eventually, the family was fed up and gave the angel a shed to sleep in. 
But then it became winter, and it was very cold, and the angel almost died. He only survived by curling up in the corner with a blanket and trying to stay warm. Eventually, he got better, and soon in the spring, the family saw the angel making attempts at flight. He was jumping off the roof of the shed and frantically flapping his wings. However, flight evaded him, and all his attempts ended in failure. Until finally, he began gaining altitude, and eventually, he disappeared into the sun. Characters Leo and Elise Samda, uh, they're a married couple, they found the angel and profited off him, and they acted quite indifferently towards him, they got rich off him, and, you know, they didn't really like him, but at least they fed him, and, to be fair, they did think that he came to take their kid to heaven, so, it is understand why they didn't you know, try to help him from all the neighbors. Yeah. Child. Uh, probably the reason the quote-unquote angel came. Uh, also how the angel got better later on. And is the only person in this story who's not a stick figure. The old man with enormous wings. Uh, slash the angel. He got bullied by a lot of people that expected miracles out of him. He, you know, he was suffering at the start, you know, getting washed up ashore on a beach. And even though the father said he wasn't an angel, it's still clouded in mystery for some part. Neighbors, they're horrible people, as we said. Uh, they expected the angel to perform miracles, even though they imprisoned him and threw stuff at him. And they're holding money since they gave money to the couple. Well, side characters, they existed. Uh, they all played a relatively minor part in the story, but if they weren't part of the story, then it will be different. Okay, that's the author. Uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, he's from Colombia, and we assume that this novel, or not novel, short story took place in Colombia because he often wrote about his own nation. There's a little Nobel Prize that he won for literature. Uh, that one he won after writing 100 Years of Solitude. It's a nice Nobel Prize. Themes. Nice picture of some mountains here. So we see cruelty towards the angel. He was treated as a zoo animal, you know, being locked up in a cage and whatnot. Uh, and, you know, he started off in a bad position, getting washed up on the beach, and things just started getting worse and worse for him. And, you know, the neighbor showed a herd mentality of cruelty since if, you know, even one of them stopped and questioned what they were doing, they might have came off as decent people but they didn't and they threw stuff at him and weren't great people but it does have to be noted that this story didn't have one villain either since it was the group of neighbors that were horrible people it wasn't one leading them against the angel faith uh the neighbors were very naive and hypocritical when it came to faith. So, you know, as an example, when the villagers gathered around an angel and decided that he should be named mayor of the world at one point in the story. But, you know, 
At the point where they called him mayor of the world, he was sitting in a chicken coop in front of them, locked up like a zoo animal. So that's incredibly hypocritical. And we can see them being naive when they chose to worship the spider instead of continuing with the angel, showing how easily that they'll switch around their faith. Another example is the priest who, uh, from his own preconceived notions, said that this bird man wasn't an angel just because he didn't speak Latin and instead spoke some non-Norwegian language. Symbols. Okay, so one of the symbols in this story was the unknown with the old man with enormous wings representing the unknown since, you know, fell out of the sky. We don't know much about him. And uh, the villagers didn't know much about him and therefore they were scared of him. That is xenophobia. Yeah, there's a movie poster of unknown definitely related to our topic. <laughs> uh, chicken coop. Uh, the chicken coop is a symbol of hypocrisy from the villagers. Despite being an angel, you know, quote unquote, uh, he was put in a chicken coop and not let out until, you know, the coop fell apart. And then they kind of just let him fly away. But, you know, we have the heavenly angel and a dirty chicken coop and that shows uh, you know, irony, because angels are kind of birds, not really, but kind of, a lot of chickens are also birds, but flightless, yeah. Spider Lady, uh, shows how easily the, vill the villagers lost faith in the angel, so, you know, at the start, people were super excited to see the angel, but once they realized that he wouldn't do miracles for them, they kind of lost interest, and then this spider lady showed up, and they started to talk to her instead, because the angel didn't really care about them, while the spider lady would tell them stories, and that shows that the villagers didn't really care about the whole, oh, the angel's so great, oh, the angel's a symbol of our religion, but they were more just curious about the unknown, and they were willing to switch that curiosity in minutes. Quotes. So, uh, the first quote, the bishop argued if wings were not the essential elements in determining the difference between a hawk and an airplane, they were even less so in the recognition of angels. So this first quote is obviously ridiculous. The priest is arguing that the old man wings are not at all relevant to the discussion of if he's an angel or not. But it, that's just crazy since that shows the length that the villagers would go to affirm what they already believe. Next quote, a spectacle like the spider lady, full of so much human truth and with such a fearful lesson, was bound to defeat without even trying that of a haunty angel who scarcely deemed to look at mortals. This quote was important because it illustrated why the humans quickly lost interest in the angel. They were not interested in the angel because he was an angel. They were interested because they hoped that he would do something for them. The spider lady was the antithesis of the angel because she openly shared her story and answered questions about her hideous body.